This morning we're going to discuss how to embed a document in Mongo, and I'm going to also cover exactly why we would uh, go about doing that, but for now let's just go with um, how to go about doing this. So let's do db.hfalgorithm.findpretty, and what we want to do is look, I want to just show you the structure of how this looks, I'm going to stretch this out a little bit, and uh, highlight that in an embedded document, what we have is we have our typical document. Like I said, it kind of looks like indented C-sharp code. Um, but we have a field here, ID, we have a field date, and we have a field name. And uh, this is just these are just test data for fun. And what I've done here is we have inside our document a embedded docu document, or you could think of it as a sub-document if you want. And that also has what looks like a document structure. So ultimately it's these, and I, I think of them as array bars, um, just because it's how they look in coding. But these brackets basically open up another document. So let's go ahead and let's insert data into this um, algorithm here, HF algorithm. And the first thing I want to do actually is uh, I want to declare a variable called uh, DT, uh, DTE, and it's going to be a date. And so I can just verify, all right, um, what that is. And the reason for this is so that I can reuse um, this. All right, so db.hf algorithm dot insert. So this would be our typical document right here that we would insert, right? We would, we would have the date. Uh, I'm going to have it to where it automatically... Um, builds the ID, of course. I'm not going to specify the ID, but you can if you want to do your own ID. Um, and this, I'm going to specify future. Okay, so this would be our normal document. We would have date, DTE, and then we would have name, and it would be future. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to say inside of this document, we want to specify another document. Okay, we want to embed another document. Okay, and so we're going to say uh, we're going to call this trades. And we're going to open a bracket and close a bracket. Now, understand that more than likely the way you're going to be doing this is with some front-end application or with some middle-end application. So we're using the syntax in MongoDB, very similar to opening up Management Studio and punching in queries, um, just to look at it and for debugging purposes. But yes, I, I totally agree with anyone who's like, well, we're not going to be doing it that way. Of, of course not. It's going to be in an application. Okay. So let's say no, and let's do um, 37 trades. And then let's do uh, type, and we're going to say buy. Okay. And I did forget one thing. I was like, I know I'm forgetting something. Okay. And then inside of this document, inside of the brackets, we're going to put these braces here because it is a document. You'll notice that when we when we set up a document, we have the braces that open up inside of the parentheses, and those braces basically hold the document. Well, we use brackets again to put in a sub-document, and inside of those brackets is the braces. Okay, so let's do that. And of course we get an error, so I'm missing a after property ID. So I'm missing a, uh, let's see here, number trades, no, there it is, and after type. And of course these errors are usually very helpful here. Okay. So then we're going to do uh, db dot uh, hf algorithm find pretty, and we'll look, and we have our new value. So uh, let's kind of review really fast on what an embedded document looks like. So we have our, our document structure here, okay? And we have the braces that open up. We have our values and what those values are, and then a sub document document or an embedded document within brackets is going to open up another document structure. Now the reason for this is that we can actually go through MongoDB. We can add to a collection. Inside of a collection, we can have documents within documents. And what that does in that example, especially with a high frequency trading algorithm, is we can build traders, and I'm, I'm talking about robotic traders, and inside of those robotic traders, we can have documents of their actual trades. And a lot of people miss they don't quite understand high frequency trading. They think there's just one approach and that's how it's done. But actually there are very there are quite a broad different amount of approaches. In fact, I could 
I could build just a trading algorithm in general that could use, for instance, Benjamin Graham's method automatically, and I could build one that uses, let's say, technical analysis automatically, and it may have a lot of trades in some periods of time, like uh, Benjamin Graham's trading algorithm would have a lot of trades during a recession, but it would have very few trades uh, when usually the economy is doing well and you're in a bull market and stocks tend to be overpriced like currently. So the idea though is we could have all those trades under that algorithm. We don't have to link it to another table. Now there's nothing wrong with joins or or a relational structure or transactions, um, but it is one of the, the things about Mongo is that we can store these embedded or sub documents within documents. Uh, a more common example of that, I'm, I was using trading there, but a more common example of that was, let's suppose you had a person's information and you were storing contact information inside of the person's information. Well, in a relational structure, we might have person ID equals one, the name, the last name, um, and then we would link that to a contact table. But in Mongo, what we could do is we could have the, the ID, the name, and the last name, and then in a subdocument, we could have like their contact email, their contact phone, etc. And we could always add to that embedded document as, let's say, their email changed, or as their cell changed, or as they added an email. Which in in today's world, it, it amazes me how many people have, you know, a hundred different emails, and rightfully so. Uh, it would be kind of a, a headache to do that else in another way. So. This is kind of a way in which you can organize data instead of um, sitting there and linking it to another table. And one of the things also that you can do, especially in embedded document, and this gets more advanced, but one of the more advanced techniques is to do MapReduce with Mongo, where instead of having a star schema like you would see in a relational structure, you actually use MapReduce to calculate certain values in your, this is very useful in text mining by the way, but you use it to calculate the number of values, then reduce it, and then organize it, and then you can store that, the results of that map reduce in the subdocument, and that way you don't have to have this, you know, kind of complicated star or snowflake schema, you've actually used map reduce to do that within a embedded document.